Well, if you were able to watch our video yesterday as we introduced to you the book of Obadiah, you remember that the three things that make this book unique is first, we don't know exactly who Obadiah was or where he came from. The second was that the book itself is very short in length. It's only one chapter, so we'll cover it all today before moving on to Jonah tomorrow. And the third thing, this message was not for the northern kingdom or the southern kingdom of Israel or Judah. It was specifically for the people of Edom, the people who lived in the southeast region, southeast of Judah. They are the descendants of Esau, whose brother was Jacob, who became the nation of Israel. And these people have become very prideful. They had aligned themselves with everybody who was against the people of God and against God himself. And that would ultimately lead to their downfall. And we walked through yesterday exactly who the Edomites were and what actually became of them. And it is a result of what happens here in this section. The message can be split up into two different things. First, judgment that's going to fall on Edom because of what they've done and who they've become. And the second is the judgment that will fall on the nations. And we'll walk through that separately. The first is here, we see in the first section, the first four verses, that these people have become very prideful and it was time for God to humble them. Look what it says here. The vision of Obadiah. The vision of Obadiah. Thus says the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a report from the Lord and a messenger has been sent among the nations. Rise up. Let us rise against her for battle. Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You shall be utterly despised. Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You will be utterly despised. The pride of your heart has deceived you. You who live in the cleft of the rock, in your lofty dwelling, who say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? Though you soar aloft like the eagle, though your nest is set among the stars, from there I will bring you. You down. They have become very secure, very proud of what they have built up, very proud of their strength, very proud of their wisdom. They thought they were secure. They thought they were safe. And they've said out to the world, it says, who will bring us down? Who will destroy us? And God shows here, I will bring you down. You become very prideful. You become very much people who are despising the humble when ultimately God despises the proud. He moves on to start showing this message of judgment that's coming upon them. He goes in verse 5, says, If thieves came to you, if plunders came by night, how can how you have been destroyed? Would they not steal only enough for themselves? If grape gatherers came to you, would they not leave gleanings? How Esau has been pillaged, his treasures sought out. All your allies have been driven have driven you to your border. Those at peace with you, you have deceived have deceived you. They have prevailed against you. Those who eat your bread have set a trap beneath you. You have no understanding. And he's saying that you have chosen in your pride to align yourself, not with me as your God, not align yourself with your brethren in Judah. You have chosen to align yourself with the enemies of God and the enemies of the people of God, such as Assyria, as Babylon. And you have looked upon the people of God mockingly and laughingly looking upon them as they suffer destruction. You've chosen to align yourselves with them. Your pride and that, that choice will be your downfall because those very people who you feel like you have peace with will destroy you. They will eat your bread. They will take your, your goods. They will take everything that you have. All your treasures will be theirs and they will push you to your borders. Those who you have made peace with, those who you've aligned yourself with. Look at it says in verse 10. Now here comes the message that they have, a message of judgment is going to fall on them for what they've done to their brothers in Judah. Because of the violence done to your brother Jacob, I'll speak, I'll speak it said Israel, shame shall cover you, and you shall be cut off forever. On the day that you stood aloof, on the day that strangers carried off his wealth, and foreigners entered his gates and cast lots on Jerusalem, you were like one of them. But do not gloat over the day of your brother and the day of his misfortune. Do not rejoice over the people of Judah in the day of their ruin. Do not boast in the days of distress. Do not enter the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Do not gloat over his disaster in the day of his calamity. Do not loot his wealth in the days of his calamity. Do not stand at the crossroads to cut off his fugitives. Do not hand over his survivors in the day of his distress. God's condemning them for the moment, the day that Babylon came into the southern kingdom of Judah and just destroyed everything. And they joined in that effort. They helped Babylon in that effort. They, 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 they entered their, into their cities on the day of their calamity. They took away their wealth. They took away their, their people. They handed over the people of Judah to the Babylonians and they rejoiced in that process. They rejoiced at their calamity. They looked upon their misfortune and they rejoiced. These people who were distant relatives to them, they rejoiced at their suffering. They rejoiced at their pain at the day of their calamity. 
And God says over and over again, do not gloat. Do not join them. Do not rejoice. Do not loot. Do not hand over their survivors. That's what they have automatically done. Here it goes, verse 15. Why? For the day of the Lord is near upon all the nations. As you have done, so shall it be done to you. Your deeds shall return on your own head. And he turns the message around saying, the very thing that you've done to the nations, to your brethren, the judgment's going to fall on all the nations and you will be included. The very thing that happened to them will happen to you. And we do know from history, as we talked about yesterday, that 30 years later, Babylon came to Edom and destroyed the people. They destroyed their way of life and they forced them out of their, out of their territory into the west towards Judah. He goes on to say, For you, as you have drunk on my holy mountain, so all the nations shall drink continually. They shall drink and swallow and shall be as though they had never been. But in Mount Zion there shall be those who escape, and it shall be holy. And the house of Jacob shall possess their own possessions. The house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau stubble. They shall burn them and consume them, and there shall be no survivor for the house of Esau. It says, those of Negeb shall possess Mount Esau, and those of Shephelah shall possess the lands of the Philistines. They shall possess the lands of Ephraim and the land of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. The exiles of this host of people of Israel shall possess the land of the Canaanites, as far as Zarephatha. And the exiles of Jerusalem who are in Shepherod shall possess the cities of Negeb. Sa saviors shall go up to Mount Zion, to Mount Esau, and the kingdoms shall be the Lord. Two things happening here. God is promising. God's promising a destruction through his judgment on the house of Esau, on the people of Edom, that they will be utterly wiped out. They'll be no more because of the way they were prideful and the way they aligned themselves with the enemies of God. And instead of aligning themselves with their people, but also aligning themselves with God. And as we talked about yesterday in the introduction, that happened just in a few hundred years after this, as they were pushed out of their own territory by Arab nations, then they became a new people, and then they were forced into the people of the, of the Judean uh, region. They, they, became, they kind of lost their identity as they became a new people. And pretty much they were completely wiped out. There's no more Edomites. There's no more people of Esau. They are now gone. That's what God promised. But he also is promising restoration here. Restoration for the people of God. And who is he referring to? Is he referring to specifically Judah, specifically Israel? Who is he referring to? And it's those who will align themselves with God. Those who will not turn on God. Those who will, those who will continually repent to him are the ones that he will protect, the ones that he will restore. And he'll make a new nation out of these people. And ultimately we see the fulfillment of that when Jesus comes and restoration begins, and begins to reconcile and return all things, all things to himself. And we are made a new people, a new creation with a new name and a new purpose. And he's restoring all those things right now. We are living in the days of reconciliation. We're living in the days of that happening. And the end is going to come once again. The end will come. Jesus will return for his church. He'll restore his church. And those who have not turned their backs on him, those who have aligned themselves with him, instead of the enemies of God, instead of the enemies of the people of God, they will be restored and they will be set apart and they'll rule and reign in the new Jerusalem and the new territory, the new promised land, the fulfilled promised land that God has made for them. This land that's not just flowing with milk and honey as we see in the Old Testament, this land that is free from sin, this land is free from darkness where, the, where the, there's no need for the sun because we have Christ. That's what, we, that's what we look forward to. That's the, that's the territory, that's the country we look forward to. That's where our citizenship ultimately lies in eternity with Christ. Everything here might come to an end, but we have our hopes set in the future with Christ. One of the things we can take away from this is very much a message that the Edomites needed to hear. That their, their pride ultimately became their downfall. Their pride became their downfall, and so quickly our pride will become our downfall. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Pride goes before the fall. There's two different scriptures I just used. That's what scripture says about pride. And I ultimately believe that pride is the root of sin. It's all about us. It's all about me. All about what I want. That will lead you down a path you don't want to go. Because ultimately what you will end up becoming is a self-centered, self-seeking individual who does not care about the downfall of others, who laughs at the downfall of others, who says that's just what they had coming. And you don't realize that that same judgment you see falling on others may be falling on you. 
align yourself with God, align yourself with his heart, align yourself with his purposes, and then you'll see and live with a new perspective and a new hope for what comes ahead of us. That's the book of Obadiah. Join us tomorrow as we start a new day in the book of Jonah.